SHA-1 is a cryptographic hash function which was first written about in 1995, developed by the NSA, with a risk of an attack to the function first written about in 2005, and finally in 2017 we have an actual demonstration where two completely different files have the same hash value. So SHA-1 is 160 bits large, which will roughly give you that many different combinations, which is not infinitely large, but that is a substantial number. So that's 20 bytes large and is represented by 40 hexadecimal characters. This is an example of the hashes here. So whatever input you give to the hash, it'll always be the same length large. So if I have one character here, same length, two characters, three characters, always the same length. So I'm looking specifically at SHA-1, I just have a couple of others listed here in GTK hash. So that's a demonstration of 1, 2, 3, and you've got ABC, so yeah. So it has a few uses within like SSL certificates, although that really shouldn't be done nowadays and is deprecated. Storing passwords, again that method is not very good nowadays but also for confirming if a file is what you expect it to be. So what some Google researchers have managed is to create two files with the same hash value. Let's give you a little demonstration. So I have a few images here, as well as the two PDF files. So let's go and calculate the SHA-1 sum of this image I have highlighted, guacamole burger. Yeah, and it's that. And what is one that's slightly different named? So, yeah. Those are the two of the same hash value. And sure enough, if I look at a preview of the image, they are the same. That's reasonable. Just because the file name is different, the hash value can be the same. And if I calculate with the other image, yeah, sure enough, we can see it is a completely different image. So the two PDF files. So you can see they have both the same SHA-1 value. Let's open them up. Well, they appear to be completely different. Completely different. <laughs> it's got a different background to it. But yeah, that is a different file. Yet it has the same value. Hmm. Obviously some trickery has been done within the PDF files because if I try and open it with Another program, let's say, uh, let's try for. Let us go for a text editor like Kate. Uh, well, it can't interpret it properly. So it's, it's got invalid characters for UTF coding. So that's not your normal PDF file because looking at most PDF files, they are legible. You can read them within a basic text editor. So some quite considerable effort has gone to messing around with this file to create the same hash value. It's not to say that it's the same hash value for all cryptographic hash mechanisms. If I went for the more basic MD5 hash, we can see that utilizing MD5 hashes, we get a completely different result. And it's the same for the next one up, the SHA-256, which is more the recommended SHA hashing mechanism for nowadays, or SHA-256 or SHA-3. Yeah, both of them are, I think, reliable at the moment. We have two different hash values there. So that is just a weakness against SHA-1. Of course, where is SHA-1 utilised? Git. So this was a response from Linus Torvalds in an article published on the register. First off, the sky isn't falling. There's a big difference between using cryptographic hash for things like security signing and one for generating a content identifier for a content addressable system like Git. While the algorithm does have a security role even in Git, error correction is more important, Tovold says, because trust should be a function of the community. If you fetch a Linux kernel from Linus's repo, it's because that's where you expect the authoritative kernel to be. The hash is there, so if someone tampered with the source code, the signature won't match, and you would know something is wrong. Torvald sees the SHA-1 hashes for the repos as more of a checksum than proof the data you fetched is the data in the official repo. Quite right, just because we have a collision now, that's the only known one, and SHA-1 still has a bit more life left in it for this purpose, just confirming the data you've downloaded 
is the data you've downloaded. But I think it's a point now where we need to start moving away from SHA-1, especially with, say, Linux ISO files. You don't want a tampered ISO file to have the same SHA-1 value as the legitimate ISO. It's time to move on, but we still have time. So that's a look at the SHA-1 collisions. Thanks for watching. See you all later.